Alrighty, here we go. Gonna give you guys an update on the Coyote Swap Corvette. A lot of you saw the post on Instagram where I got the gantry set up. Have the Coyote motor in and this is how it fits. A lot of you that are wondering how does it actually fit? Well, this is actually all the way down, literally touching the oil pan and there's actual room. Um, obviously you see a lot of bullshit here that is eventually going to get removed. There's AC lines that have to get tucked away. Um, the harness is still attached. Again, I'm not really going to start cutting into this car. I want to try to do it as at least amount of, uh, let's just say hacking as possible. <clears throat> so got the motor on where it's supposed to sit. And there are a couple of issues already that I have to figure out. So what I'm going to do in this video is kind of just give you the rundown as to what I found out, what I saw, what I figured out that's going on with the motor. First of all, firewall clearance is going to be an issue eventually. Same thing with uh, some of the master cylinder clearance and a lot of the AC lines and a lot, a lot of bunch of bunch of other crap is in the way. So I left the AC compressor on because I have to discharge the system, but it's really not in the way. It's kind of free hanging there. So there's a big void there. So I was able to get clearance on the crank and it's not that much difference than where the LS9 sits. If you guys know anything about the LS9, how it sits in there, this steering rack is in the way. So when you do a cam job or anything, you have to remove the steering rack and you can't really access the steering rack when you have the radiator and a whole bunch of other crap here. So a cam job on these cars, it's actually, when, when it has an LS9, it's kind of a big deal. But let's get underneath and I'll show you what I'm dealing with, what my thought process is, and what the goals are for today on this video. Um, what I want to do, more than anything, is to engage the clutch fully onto, I'm sorry, yes, uh, onto the spline of the torque tube and have it at least touch the slave cylinder. So let's get underneath and show you what that looks like. Let's go for a ride. Do 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 do. Ouch. Da ba da ba. Be ba 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 di ba ba. Did I have that? Yeah, I'm good. I left the flashlight down here. I'm pretty smart sometimes. Well, not really. I'm pretty stupid. Okay. So this is what it looks like underneath. As you can tell, as you can see, the oil pan kind of sits low. So what I'm gonna do because I have room this way and this way is I'm more than likely gonna buy like a Moroso oil pan that has a wider sump area, but it has to be more narrow over here. The reason it has to be more narrow on the backside is because it's resting on the subframe. So if I can get an oil pan that has a more shallow rear area with the proper pickup tube, but wider here, meaning it can be wider to accommodate for everything, but maybe a little more shallow, meaning not this full depth, but a little more shallow, but wider. I can go wider. Wider is cool. I can go as wide as the subframe lets me. And obviously there's going to potentially be header issues, but they're going to be custom headers. So that's not really a big concern. The other issue, and this, this is the trans line. This is going to get cut and I'm going to have an auxiliary cooler is these are the motor mounts. If you look closely, these are the motor mounts. And if you look at the mounting holes, it is way off, okay? So I'm gonna have to either see what the stock mounts look like mounted on there, which I can do today, or um, just make a complete custom mount. But it still has to go back this much, okay? So I'm gonna have to, you know, figure out what to do about that. And then um, once I kind of, once I'm able to engage the clutch fully so that it's touching. See, this is all the way out. So once it's touching this guy, I can then, uh, you know, it's probably gonna have to go in quite a bit. It's gonna have to compress. Um, but the funny thing is when you push the clutch in, it actually pushes out. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of curious as to why it's not coming in, but we'll figure that out. But I wanna get it at least touching and closer, okay? And if I can do that, then I can, you know, take some measurements that are a little more accurate. But before that, I got to get the engine out of the car, remove the oil pan, then come back, try to put it back in the car, try to get it engaged on here, and then see what my measurements look like. So that's the goal for today. 
So just wanted to give you kind of a rundown as to what I've been dealing with for the last, I don't know, bazillion years. Uh, just kind of like, you know, making sure that everything fits. But this is the actual Coyote motor that's going to go in it. It's a Gen 3 bottom end, Gen 2 heads, Gen 2 cams locked. And it's going to run either a Gen 1 or a Gen 2 control system and uh, a power adder. It's going to have a TVS for a power adder. I'm not really sure which one yet, but I'm working with a couple of manufacturers, but we'll see. But uh, enough of that. Let's uh, let's get the motor out, oil pan out, and then try this again. Be my friend. That far. Okay, so now I have to tip this up. And the way I tip it up is I cheat. I put this up here. I tip the motor up using a second picking point and ratchet it to get some angle out of it. The old mill right trick. Who knows if you put the mill right and stuck with the mill right. Alright, let's get underneath and control the lift from underneath. Let's get under the car and play around underneath there. Okay, so I'm under the car. I'm gonna mess around here, see what we can do. Would you look at that? Okay, so this guy goes up. Okay, so this is loose. So I don't have to worry about this. As long as I keep this angle, I can go up. So I'm gonna go back up and control it from the top. Okay, that's good because I was able to sneak it in without having to remove the rack. That's the whole, the whole thought process is that get this stupid gantry, spend 1500 bucks a whole Saturday setting it up just so that I can have the ease of going up and down with a button. So let's see if I can get it all the way up here and then start moving it around. Let me unlock the wheels on the gantry. So the gantry now can move. Now the gantry can move. And I will give it a little forward pressure. Beautiful. Yes. So now I want to be picking it at an angle. I'm going to lock it here. Forward angle. It's a lot of a lot of little tedious work, but we can get it. There you go. Well, it should be mine. I should have it. Because it's on the quick jacks, I'm just going to lower the car and I should have proper room to move everything. Let me get underneath and move some stuff and I'll lower the car a little bit. Okay, let me lower the car a little bit, getting some more clearance on this guy. The camera will go down so it'll look like the motor's going up. Actually, it's going to look like everything's going forward, because it is going forward. Okay, so let me unlock the least. You can do anything you can't want by yourself. You gotta have tools. That's what sucks. Friends are severely overrated. I just need enough room to 
we have the oil pan, that's going to suck, actually. So we'll see. Actually, I'll bring this one up with the and lock it. That should be good. I don't want to bring it all the way down. So I should have just enough clearance to get things, this thing out of here. Um, worst case scenario, I can bring it down, repick it shorter, and have more clearance. But again, I'm um, just trying to get this guy in a favorable position. So let me take the oil pan off and then try to put it back in and see if that gains me any clearance with this whole situation getting it into the input shaft. Okay, took the old pan out. I'm contemplating leaving that in because I, man, should I take the pickup out? Yeah, I should take the pickup out so it doesn't get bent and bullshit happens. But I'm hoping that gaining this much clearance right here will allow me to have a better angle to get the motor slid in in this angle and keep the steering rack in play. I'm gonna take that motor mount off because I know it doesn't fit, so it might give me a little more clearance. Okay, let's now go up with the car. Up with the car. Okay, so the motor gets further away, so I have to bring the trolley forward. But I want to get the car all the way up in the air. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm on this way. Nice, very nice. Boy, it's almost too smooth, you know? Let me lock the other side so it doesn't keep moving forward. Oh, man. Okay, that's good. Lock it there. Get it all the way up. There we go. Okay. What's hitting? See. There you go, all the way up. All right, let's get it down and see if we can get it into the transmission. The next thing you'll see is hopefully the clutch fully engaged in the transmission. Alrighty guys, looks like we made extremely good pro progress. So this is what we got going on. We have the, whatever the fuck, slave cylinder pretty much making contact with the pressure plate, we have a block of wood being supported by this cart, Harbor Freight for the win, keeping the angle where it needs to be. I can bring the motor sideways a little bit. I can bring it to the, if you're facing the, the, the front of the car, if you're looking at the motor in the front of the car, the, the motor's gotta go to the right a little bit, but look at the amount of clearance I have on the oil pan. As lo Again, I can move that out of the way the other motor mount is nowhere, nowhere in sight. So I have about two inches of clearance. So as long as the oil pen is not any uh, deeper than two inches at the back sump, it could be as deep as it wants to be over here. So I'll be looking at parts, houses, Moroso, all those people to kind of guide me as to what's what. 
Uh, let me turn off this flashlight. I don't know how to keep that flashlight on. It was actually really nice. Okay, so I have to order an oil pan. I have to cut these transmission lines and make an aftermarket cooler for it. But in terms of does it fit? Yes. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get Jake down here and I'm going to say, hey, Jake, I need you to come down and take some measurements with me because he's a lot smarter than I am. And I want to see if there's any gain to keeping this where it's at and measuring for the bell housing because we literally can go from here to here and measure the width. But if he's like, nah, not necessary. We just wanted to make sure it physically fit. So we have to figure out the motor mount situation. Okay, we gotta figure the motor mount situation out. We gotta figure out bell housing width. We already got the bolt pattern down and we gotta buy ourselves an oil pan. But guys, in terms of does it physically fit? I'm not messing around. I'm not doing this for clout and not actually gonna do it. It looks like everything fits where it should be. So I'll be sending these videos off to people, getting people over here to measure with me, and uh, we'll get some oil pan stuff ordered. I'll get measurements for the bell housing and the guy at the Department of Boost will hopefully get that bell housing welded and coming. Actually, I, I have, a, have to buy the quick time bell housing and ship it to him, and then we have to get super duper accurate measurements on this guy. But it looks like everything is in. Now, remember, this is a single disc, so this will engage a lot easier on this input shaft than the dual disc that's going to go on it. It's going to get him a Cloud 1200 HD uh, with a steel flywheel. So that's going to be a little harder to engage. But since I kind of have the technique down now, I don't, I'm not that afraid to do it. So again, guys, thank you very much. This is a kind of an you know, in-depth update, but just giving you a heads up as to what needs to happen to show if this thing is actually you know, going to fit or not. And so far, it looks like she'll fit. Thanks for listening, guys. Talk to you later.